the first indication, it was Saturday morning. Uh, I was only five years old, but I remember it all vividly. It's one of those things you never forget. My uh, mother uh, went out in the street near the house and looked up toward the Gulf of Mexico, toward the coast, and noticed that the waves were dashing higher than usual. Uh, they were dashing as high as telephone poles even then. So people got on streetcars or walked and went out to watch, watch the, the waves hitting. And I, I remember the feeling that we felt like we were in a saucer. The ocean, it, the land seemed to go up toward the ocean. And we felt, we sort of wondered, I wondered as a child, why the water just didn't just come into it. Well, it's, that's an illusion. It was probably two or three feet higher. But we went to the uh, beach and watched the waves. And the waves, there was a car trestle, and the waves were getting coming over the car trestle, and the people were, the cars had to stop running, the street cars. And it started to rain. Well, the, uh, we had some friends within about two or three blocks of the ocean. And uh, we took refuge in their house. And their name was the Boschkes. Boschke, George Boschke, I suppose. And it was a big home, but it was very close to the uh, ocean. And uh, as I remember that toward uh, noon, lunchtime, uh, we were in the kitchen and I even remember they had apple pie and cheese and for lunch. And we could see the water coming in under the doors, under the kitchen doors. The water was then beginning to come in. It was heavy rains, but the seawater was coming over the town. And then we watched and we, oh, they rolled up the rugs and we walked on rugs. And as the day went on, uh, we, uh, one of the girls of that household, Boschke girls, uh, they had visitors too. I, uh, and she and I sat on the steps and moved up the steps and watched the furniture in the lower floor begin to float. And things begin to bump around and, and floating. And finally, uh, as, as the day went on and toward late afternoon and nightfall, Everything on the first floor was floating and bumping against uh, the ceiling of the first floor. Now then, uh, of course, by then the winds were about 100 miles or more, 100 miles, 110, 20 miles an hour. And uh, it was just a howling shriek. And as the night wore on, everybody was praying and uh, screaming or whatever people do. And there was about, uh, well, friends, neighbors, family, relatives, so forth, about 20, 30 in one room. And, and then in another room where all the people had pulled out, mostly blacks, pulled out of the water and in through the windows. And the house was disintegrating. The house was coming apart. And as, uh, as each room would, the roof would disappear, and then the walls, and the people would, in the house would run into the still remaining rooms. Well, to shorten the story, it, uh, everything of that house, because the lower floor was not livable, because it was completely inundated in water. And uh, I know a lot of people had the theory, I heard about it afterwards, or maybe even then, they opened the doors on the lower floors, let the water in, let it hold the house down, keep from floating. But the house blew away. It was a big home, big home, rambling sort of home, blew away all except two rooms, with about 40 blacks in one and 30 white and refugees and families in another. They even had segregation under those conditions.